So hi everybody and welcome back to the C++ tutorial series for absolute beginners. This is video 244 and this video we talk about again the access specifier but about the inheritance access specifier. For that you go here again in cppreference.com to the uh, this page here then you click on language and in language you go here to the derivative class and this is the page which you need because we scroll down and then here is public inheritance and I want that you read this through because I will use a table and you should read also protected inheritance and private inheritance. And the table which I use is just, let's say, a very short info which uh, explains this in a very easy way and the table is this one and this table is just a standard table you can find it all uh, around the internet or you can just make it yourself and which uh, this table says just this you have a base class this is our start class here this one here and the base class can have, of course, the free access specifier. We learned now all access specifier, public, protected, private. Uh, this can be used for variables and uh, functions that we know also. And uh, we will just, uh, I make examples with variables, but keep in mind, it accounts also for functions. So with that said, we can use inheritance, right? We can inherit from the base class. What I mean with that one is when I switch here to my code and here you can see that was my class house, that was my class hotel. Hotel is my base. This is my start class. I extend this house and say I specialize it and make it a hotel and how we make it. We use inheritance and what I mean with inheritance access specifier is this one here. We can change this to public, uh, protected <coughs> or private, but else we can uh, don't use it at all. Keep this in mind. Sometimes is this so. And uh, what you have to think about now is this access specifier here is changing the access specifier in the base class. And that is normally not good for us programmer because we have then to think a little bit more instead of looking. What I mean with that is normally you just open it, you watch here, it's uh, public, protected, private, and you know it, right? And now this public here can change this behavior and that's why we have to learn it. That's why you should read this one. <clears throat> this is the uh, more detailed explanation and but I use here this table, which is very easy to understand, but still, you, even if you understand it easy, you have to practice to know it. So let's get started. So here's my base class. Like I said, uh, variables <coughs> can be pu public, protected, private. And now what I'm going to do is like here in my code, I am extending this with one of this uh, uh, access specifiers for inheritance and <clears throat> here let's make it so side by side public here is public so the base class like I said will change in the inherited class uh, because we know when we derive a class from the base we have access to this base variables here but they behave different and here is the short list how they behave the base becomes uh, if we make a public inheritance like this one here, I make a public. All the ver <coughs> sorry, <coughs> uh, all the variables from the base becomes public, protected, and no access. Careful. This what is, what I mean here is what this base variables or functions becomes right. Not for the derivative class. The derivative class stays like normal access specifier and what I mean with that is let me show you this one too so this is my base oh it's here this one this will change but the derivative class what you define here stays like you defined it private to public or whatever so keep this in mind and then it's very easy then you say okay the public one is the easiest one public stays public protected stays protected if you want access it in the state, only the private one change. And the private one is also very easy. Why so? Because you will never have access to the private. Uh, it doesn't matter which way you inherit it. A private stays in a uh, base private. So for example, in my case, I have here one 
uh, no, I have here free variables private. I will no access it from my base class here. <clears throat> okay, that's very easy. The same goes for, uh, let's go to the protected. And you can see public becomes protected. Protected becomes protected. Private, like I said, never access. And here we have private. Public becomes private. Protected becomes private. And private, like all time, no access. And you can read this more in detail here in this one here but this table here like i said found you find something like this all time online everywhere and it's easier to just watch this one and check this one so here one uh warning you see it is easy to understand but it's really annoying and makes a lot of work what i mean with that let's go back and you have to check when you inherit uh Okay, they was they were in the base how they were defined in the base. So for example, ah, these variables were so defined private, the other one was so defined. Now I have here a public inheritance. Public inheritance means ah they are not changing, so which means I can check. And you see, you have to think a much, much more about uh about this kind of stuff, which is uh, why people don't like inheritance, more work and uh, not difficult but more work and annoying and here one more thing which we have to talk <clears throat> which is protected and private i uh, said in my last video private and protected behaves really similar which means if you have a protected uh, inheritance in your class you have only access to this in your class not outside and the same goes for private too, right? So if you have a private variable, you have it only access in your class, not outside. It was this example here. Let's make this one. I made this thing with, this is private, not this one. Uh, yeah, let's say this uh, protected here. Anyway, I made here an example. We have not outside access. Important is here, um, Important here is, wait a minute, when you watch this a little bit closely, what is the real difference than here when we come from here, right? When you come from the base, you make a protected inheritance. This becomes protected, okay, but I have only access it in the class and not outside. And when you compare this now to private, okay, from the base again, we go here. You have only access it inside the class, not outside. They behave absolutely the same, right? The question is then, what is the real difference? And for that, you have step one step further. You have go one step further. <laughs> and what I mean with that is because don't forget that you can inherit again. So first you inherit, let's say here, this is the first inheritance from this base, but let's say this one becomes another base for another inheritance. And that's the big difference because now if I inherit from this here again and again, I can inherit public, private and protected. So if I inherit, for example, from here uh, public, this, be uh, this stays protected in the next one. This stays protected in the next one and no access. If I make it protected, then this stays again protected, protected, and no access. If I make it private, this protected, protected becomes private, private, no access. And that's the different because with this one here, when I go here now, so from here, let's say I make now first base to private and from private this one, if I inherit now from public, this becomes private, private, no access. If I have inherit protected, this becomes uh, no access, no access, no access. And if I inherit private, this becomes, uh, uh, what becomes this? <laughs> uh, private becomes no access, no access, uh, becomes all the time no access, right? You can see we have no access. So think about this one, right? And to, with that, let's make some examples to see if this is really co correct what I say. Perhaps I 
said something wrong. But this is the main difference, right? Careful about this one. And I show you this now in my little example. I extended my example, by the way, so that we can see here free, all free access specifiers, public, protected, private. Then I have created here a class hotel. That was the one which I created already, but I created here one more class so we can see if I inherit one more step. It's a very simple class, so I made not much uh, just to see if we can inherit or not. So let's make the example. This house is my base. Let's start with public inheritance, but public inheritance, which means I inherit here public. I specified here, this is my derivative class, hotel public, and I derive it from house, this is my base, which means now when I follow this, uh, this uh, table here, it means I have access to the public variables of the base, protected variables I can access, and private I can't only access the private one. So you can, you have to train this a little bit on your own. I don't do this now here, everything, but I make here one example. So which means I have this one, I can access it inside the class. Public means I can access it inside my derivative class, but also outside my derivative class. That's very important. Keep this in mind. So let's make here an example. This int house should be accessible from my object, which is my hotel from my last video. We should have access it here because I made a public access inheritance and house number. Indeed, here is it. I can access it outside. House number is here. I made here a public inheritance. Public inheritance means if the base has a public and you can see public that was public, I can access it inside my derivative class here and outside. That's very important that you learn this kind and train this a little bit. So, and like I said, I don't go now to all things here step by step, but let's make at least the first line so that you can see. Now I go and change this one to protected. Let's see what we what happens with protected. Protected. Again, you see already I have here an uh, error. That's good because when we watch the table, it says the public one becomes protected and we learned what means protected protected means you can access the base inside your class but not outside the class which means let's follow this step again house is public becomes in my hotel now protected so this is protected now it's no more public which means inside my hotel i still can access it let's access it for example here in this uh, function here, and you can see here, anyway, this house number, no, it is house height. Let's write here house number, house number, and you can see here's my house number, I can access it, let's say, let's change it to 50 or something like that. And you can see, okay, I can access it, no errors, because protected means I can access this inside, but it says, if you make an object about your derivative class, this hotel, this again, my hotel here, an object, you can't access it outside. So we learned this as well. Very nice. And now we make private. The last one, let's do this also. Let's change this one to private. And you see what? Again, I can access it inside. Is this right? Is this right? Public becomes private. Private means I can access it inside. Yes, I can access it inside. And yes, I can't access it outside. Right? So you have really go through on your own when you train this a little bit and test this all on your own. That's very important that you understand this, uh, the other ones too. And this is very important to train. So with that said, we, we and outside we know outside private num uh, number number uh, private uh, variables or functions we can't access outside that we know anyway interesting is now the this this step here let's do this one too so let's say i <clears throat> make a protected inheritance and from this protected i go one step further what happens then right so let's go there so first 
Well, let's start with this private. That was the most interesting. Let's start with private. I think protected is just, you can see, you can make, let's make private because I said all becomes inaccessible. <laughs> let's see if this is true. Let's make private. So first of all, I, this is my base. I go here and make a private. That's right. This is my base was again, my hotel. Uh, I mean my house, then I hotel and I make it private. Okay. And now I create another fun uh, class and this another class inherits from hotel, right? So here I make you another class and then I have to, of course specify how I want access it and let's make access it private, right? So I said, what happens if I access it from here private? So here from here becomes private private. Here I make again access private and let's see if I have any access to this one prior uh, to my other ones here. And when I see here, I created again this other object. This is my new class. Here's my inheritance. Here I created this object and this print house number is just a function which I can access. Why I can't access this again? Because it's inside the class. This inheritance access specifier is only for the base class or uh, not for the access specifier inside the class, right? Careful about this all time. That's normal, but I'm interested not in this. I'm interested in my inherited variables, right? Okay, hotel manager, get access please to the house number in which you work. But you can already see, hmm. again, we go from here, it's private. From here, when I access it again, private, private, private means no access. And when I go down, indeed, here, I write hotel manager dot, I have no access. And you can already see, I have no access to nothing here, right? But let's test something. Let's say I change this one to, protect it. So I inherit this private and then I inherit this one to protect it. What happens then? So we have to watch here what happens when the base was protected. Uh, what becomes uh, from protected? Here's protected. Uh, when I, let's make this first. So the, I make here hotel worker protected. Right. But important is you have to check what was that. So no, let's start with the first house. I derive it with private and then I make protect it. Okay. And what is now here? The table are saying, can you see it? So we have here protected, protected is here. So when I make it from this one, but when it was, uh, First, I have to check again, sorry. <laughs> I have to check again what makes private. So first we have this one. It becomes private. So you can see all becomes private. And then I make protected. Let's write here protected. And then you have to check, okay, all is private. What happens if, oh, from private to protected. So when it's private to protected means no access as well. So when it's private, it goes to protected. It is no access. So here should be no access as well. Let's test this. So hotel manager, you should have no access to nothing, right? Again, we have no access. And you can see it's, a little, you, first of all, you thought, yeah, it's easy, but now it's not so easy. And what I mean, not so easy. You have to follow the steps to see uh, where I have access, when I have access, why I have not access. You have all time this checking. And that's a little bit annoying in inheritance. So probably one reason why many C++ people don't like it uh, because it's easy to understand, but this checking, it's annoying and time wasting probably. And that costs time. So with that said, let's make one more perhaps this, uh, let's see what we can do here. Protect, let's make this one is inherit. Uh, at least one example for this one, right? To see, uh, because I said the difference about the protected and private is here you get probably no access to anything from here when you have private because 
if you have private and then you make anything uh, uh, inherit from it anything all becomes no access you can see this is so becomes a dead end when you have a private inheritance so most becomes a dead end because you can't go on at least uh, not for access but protect it not let's make this as our last example i hope it's not too too confusing <laughs> but here again we start with house as our base this time i want protected okay protected and this time i say all right we have protected here becomes protected protected which means we should access to this one and let's see what happens if i make protected again so protected protected <laughs> all right so the protected here we can see okay when we protect it and protect it again it stays protected which means here we have access in the derivative class for this one here you can see that's a big difference here that end all becomes no access more or less protected still have access and that's why that's the real difference here in inheritance between protected and private but let's test this so i have now protected and we learned that protected well, which means private we don't care about private because we know private becomes all time unaccessible but this two here should be accessible right because public becomes protected protected stays protected <clears throat> then we have here protected so but careful protected means again not outside protected means only inside so i have to test this inside here and you can already see here's the house number here's house number yes i have access here's house height here's house height so far so good but now important is now the next one right we are interested in the next one so here it becomes protected which means the house number should be here accessible and i have here already something and you can see house number here no error here still arrow but let's change this one it's annoying a little bit we know this uh, i have never changed that so but you can see this one no error right and the reason for that is again protected stays protected which means i have access so it comes from here it stays here protected inheritance i still have access here all right but again not outside so the hotel manager of course it was protected no outside access outside of the class inside of the class all right i think if you understand it so far um it's good the good thing is this table here makes it easy but you see it is easy to understand but are really annoying to check all the steps okay from where it comes what was it before why i have no later access for example if you have an inherited hierarchy uh, the easiest way is probably the private private means all time you are going to a dead end but protect means most time you can go deeper and deeper for example if you go from here protected 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 you can here make a really long uh, hierarchy of access and we may will make in future a little bit examples too but right now if you understand it so far very good and with that said i stop here and if you have any questions like all time write in the comment section see you in the next video good luck have fun and like all time never give up